Hey, thanks for checking out this week's video. This is part two of my first ever oil painting. In part one, I covered how I create a mock-up in Photoshop, drawing the line work, and then transferring to canvas. This one is just purely about the painting process, any problems I encountered, and what I learned. So if you wanna see that other stuff first, I'll pop a link in the description box below. So I'm gonna start by going over the things that I found the hardest and problems that I'm pretty sure I may have actually set myself up for and how I'm gonna avoid those the next time. If you watched the first part, you'll remember me commenting on the pencil line work becoming an issue because I had created such strong lines, it took quite a lot of paint to cover them. Now this was fine in most areas, such as the eyes or just the general shape of the face, but I also, for some reason, drew in guides for the edges of the shadows and the highlights, which would have been fine, except that I did it too strongly there as well. So it meant that I had to go over those areas more than I would have needed, and therefore it kind of made it harder to blend. You can actually see in the video, the line defining her cheekbone is still really clear. Just gonna comment on what's happening in the video right now. Welcome to problem number two. I found while I was painting, I had this really weird vertical line that appeared across the woman's face. So I posted on a couple of art Facebook groups and found out that it's actually down to a poor canvas design. The canvas material was pushing against the support of the frame and some more paint caught on that edge and created this line. A solution to this would be to either tighten the canvas material so it didn't touch the frame under pressure from the brush, or, as I did, to cut up some cardboard and slide it underneath the problem areas, and I found this worked perfectly, although I was worried that the cardboard itself would create the same problem, but it never did. Now you can actually buy frames that have a sort of tapered edge, like a wedge, I guess, so that this problem doesn't happen, and I'm definitely going to be buying those ones in the future. So back to the pencil issue. The solution for this is probably fairly easy, either just don't draw in the edges of your shadows and your highlights too strongly, or if at all. Maybe trying an underpainting first, using the paint to create a rough sketch, because I assume that would maybe blend better. I'd like to experiment though, actually going further with the pencils and maybe using glazing to build up several layers of color on top. So rather than like doing all the outlines and everything, I'd actually be shading it properly, then adding the thin layers of paint. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I'm not sure how well it'd work or what the outcome would even be, but it's definitely an experiment for a future video. So another issue I had, which was reoccurring throughout the whole process, was that I'm fairly certain I wasn't using enough paint. This was partly because, well, I didn't want to waste any paint by mixing up too much but also that I was very aware the medium I was using isn't one of the most popular ones that other oil painters seem to use, or at least not ones that I've watched videos from like Happy D Artist, Leoba and Lena. They all use Liquin. This helps speed up the drying time considerably and I always hear so many good things about it, but I'm trying to use the least toxic products as possible in my household as I have a young child and a very curious cat. My ventilation isn't great either and I'm also really prone to headaches, so I opted for a Zestit brand, which is supposedly also very good and smells like citrus, which is quite nice. Um, although obviously I've got nothing to compare this to, so I was unsure how long it would take to dry and I didn't really want to use thick layers of paint just in case. This meant that I felt I couldn't be as bold with my brush strokes and just getting into that good rhythm and generally learning by doing as I was always holding back and keeping in mind those drying times. So that kind of sucked and is something I'm definitely going to try avoid next time. The next issue, which may or may not be an issue that I encountered, was my way of putting down colour. I often see other artists laying down paint bit by bit, so rather than adding a flat colour everywhere, then highlights and shadows on top of that, they would just lay the paint next to each other more precisely as one layer, and then adjust those with additional layers. As a former digital artist, this was really tough to wrap my head around, as for years I've never done it that way. I actually told myself at the start of this painting to try do it the way that other artists do, starting with the darkest tones first, and the first thing I did was put down a mid-tone. <laughs> Immediately I realised, but I just sort of decided to go with it and see if I could make my way work. But I think it may have made the blending harder as time went on. I did feel it was easier blending lighter values into the darker ones, so then when it came to adding those darker ones, it was a bit awkward. I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain, and I guess it's a very personal part of the process. 
I feel I want to make it work from my approach if I can, but at the same time I don't want to set myself up for a method that is just super awkward. I think I might ask around some other artists and see if I could get a good answer as to why they paint it in such an order. While on the topic of blending and trying to make things look uniform I guess, I found it awkward to make colour or value adjustments after the layers had dried. This is when I assumed glazing would come in good use, or maybe it's just about learning how to colour mix a bit more efficiently. But with glazing I find it confusing for me in that you still have to follow the fat over lean rule. Basically you add more oil with each layer otherwise they dry at the wrong speeds and it can cause cracking and ruin your painting. But with a glaze the paint needs to be thin enough so that you can see through it and just gently tint what's already on your canvas. So wouldn't it be quite a low fat layer that makes it sound like it's food I hope you get what I mean the medium that I would use to glaze is also quite runny and I'm not sure it's up to the task so that's another thing for me to look into for next time I did sort of try to soften the edges of the, the lips and the eyebrows a bit later on but I'm not sure I did it right and it wouldn't surprise me if it did crack in the future. So perhaps an obvious issue that I made for myself was choosing such a small canvas or maybe creating a mock-up that was too detailed for the size of the canvas. But as it was my first oil painting, I didn't want to go really big, I just wanted to experiment and have some fun and just see what happened. But that meant that certain areas were really tough, especially the details of the eyes and the hair. I found I just didn't have a brush small enough to get the details I wanted. So there are some areas that are more clumsy than I would have liked. So lesson learned, next time I'll probably go for maybe an A4 or an 8 by 10 inch size. This, I'm pretty sure it was a 5 by 7. Towards the end, I'll be honest, I was starting to get a little bit bored of it. I'd spent quite a while painting this and as fun as it was, I felt like I wanted to finish it so I could start a new one and apply everything that I'd learned from this and hopefully get much better results. So I did end up rushing parts of it here and there and then I made a really big mistake which I feel ruins it. Um, which are the eyelashes. I went far too bold and cartoony. They just do not look right to me. I do feel it could maybe be fixed if I went over the top to try and tone them down and soften them up a bit. But more than likely, since I'm very new to oils, I'd just make it worse. So I've accepted my mistake. So to summarize everything that I've learned from my first oil painting, it would be to not go too bold with your pencils unless you want it to show through or if you plan to use thicker paint over it. Make sure your canvas material doesn't rest on the support frame behind it and create those weird lines. Don't be afraid to use more paint. Get those darker values in first or plan colour blocking better? I don't know, that's one to experiment with I guess. Learn how to use glazes properly and use them. <laughs> and use a larger canvas and perhaps also invest in smaller brushes. The painting is not yet fully dry but I do plan on varnishing it too so I can experience how that works. Then I'm probably going to hang on to it to see how well it ages and hopefully there's no cracking. So I do have an exciting announcement. I'm going to be doing my first exhibition at a local art centre here in Scotland and I couldn't be more happy and quite nervous. <laughs> I'm toying with the idea of going for a secret world theme. Fairies and nymphs, mermaids and other mystical beings. So if there's anything in particular that you would like to see, do let me know. It's not until September, so I will still be posting my time-lapse videos here on YouTube, but I'll probably reduce just how much commentary they have so I can spend that extra time making more art. And that about wraps it up, so thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please do give it a like, and if you want to see more, then hit that subscribe button. Until next time, bye!